Welcome to Spectralink Productions video production blog where we take you behind the scenes of the making of our first project, The Last Rite, Shellington Heights. If you've been following our video blogs, you've been seeing how we've brought our dog monster from ZBrush to Maya and how we've exported the displacement maps for him so we can generate the high level of detail we see in ZBrush at render time within Maya. Now, however, Autodesk has released Maya and Mudbox 2012 and with it a new method for generating even more detail at render time using something new called vector displacement maps. What are vector displacement maps? To explain them, let's begin with looking at bump maps and displacement maps. Both bump and displacement maps take a grayscale texture to generate detail by calculating elevation and depression along the normal of a plane. A bump map creates the illusion of detail, which renders faster but doesn't hold up at the edge of the silhouette. Displacement maps, by contrast, will generate the detail at render time. They are slower to render, but they are creating geometry, as opposed to bump maps which are simply tricks of light. Then some clever people thought to themselves, why only black and white? Why only up and down? By using the red, green, and blue values, we can now create detail in all directions along the normal, and that is known as a normal map. Like a bump map, however, it is only the illusion of detail and breaks at the silhouette. It didn't take long before someone figured out how to take the same evolutionary leap of bump map to normal map and apply it to displacement maps. Hence, the vector displacement map, which instead of grayscale up and down values, it uses all three colors, red, green, and blue, to represent the displacement in all three directions. So here's our dog monster all looking nice and disgusting here in ZBrush 4. The problem we have is that ZBrush at the current time cannot do vector displacement maps. They can only do displacement maps. At the time of this recording we are currently in ZBrush 4 and that feature has not been added. So we need to get this guy into Mudbox. So how do we do that? Make sure he's at the highest subdivision, and then we're going to export this main body as an OBJ, which we've already done here. As you can see, it's pretty large, about 400 megs, but that's fine. Mudbox can handle that. So now we need to import this high res model into Mudbox. So now that we have Mudbox open, we need to import that high res OBJ. I remember this OBJ is about 6 million or so polys, so it's pretty heavy. Now you're going to get this warning that's saying it's extremely high res, well we know this. So to improve performance, it wants to rebuild those subdivision levels. That's fine, that's exactly what we want to do. So here's our dog monster. is 3 million or so polys. Now in order to do the vector displacement calculations it needs to do it from the high res to the low res much like it does it in ZBrush. Problem is at this point all we have are the high res. In previous versions of Mudbox there was a method of importing the high res mesh on the low res mesh as a layer but it was really buggy and unreliable. I tried it and I was always getting lots and lots of artifacts. Good news is, is that that is no longer the way you have to do it. Simply come over here to Mesh, Rebuild Subdivision Levels. As we can see here the rebuild is complete. Five lower subdivision levels have been found. So if we page down, that's four, three, two, one and we can even go down to zero which is 6200 polys but if you remember from the previous video production blogs that's pretty low res we've been sticking to 12,000 polys for this character and again we have decided that 12,000 was a good number that 50,000 was a, a tad heavy to work with though not unreasonable we could have gone 50 one important thing to note here is you want to make sure your scale is correct. What I've done is I've actually saved this file out already. I pulled it into Maya, made sure the scale was correct, and then sent that directly from Maya to Mudbox. The reason being is that the vector displacement map is going to be reliant on the scale 
and if your scale is off then your maps are going to be off. This is the fixed up file. I pulled it into Maya, made sure it was the correct scale, and then from Maya sent it directly to Mudbox, which is another cool feature they've added in Mudbox and Maya is the ability to just shift things back and forth with a button click. It is really nice. Um, the only way I can pull this at 3 million polys into Maya is because I got a really beefy machine here. I got about 12 gigs of RAM on this uh, i7, which at the time of this recording is a pretty big machine. You can get bigger, but um, it's bigger than the average machine you're going to find at Best Buy, that's for sure. So, yeah, don't try that unless you have some power. But I was able to pull it into Maya, scale it to size, and position it correctly because, again, scale is important when you are calculating your vector displacement maps. And as you can see, Mudbox is right now coloring the different UV shells for us. To generate our vector displacement map, come over here to Extract Texture Maps and you can create a new operation or use an, an existing one if you already have one. From here you want to go Vector Displacement Map. It actually walks you through it pretty well. You want to set it to the level that you are exporting it to and again we have decided that we don't want to export it at the lowest level because that's too low. We want to go ahead and export it to level 1. The highest level of detail is level 5 so we want it all the way at the top. Make sure smooth target UVs is off. This option is in case you're using a renderer such as RenderMan according to the help docs. You see right there some renderers such as Pixar's RenderMan have the ability to smooth UVs. When I tried it with Mental Ray it did not come out well so make sure that is off. Image size I'm going to use 4K maps here. and I'm going to set the anti-aliasing to 4X. That gave me some good results. One thing you can do is you can set the image size really, really small and then just test your anti-aliasing because obviously the higher this is, the longer it's going to take to export. Now the important thing is we need to see what our vector space is and we have four options. Relative tangent is for use within Mudbox as a modeling tool. You can use the vector displacement maps. For example, if I created a vector displacement map of an ear I can actually use that to model an ear within Mudbox. That's what relative tangent is for. We are of course exporting this to Maya so we don't want to use this. Object and world are for non-deforming objects. In object mode the object can be animated but it can't be deformed. In other words if you have a solid object moving around like maybe say an asteroid floating around or a brick or something that would be fine but it, uh, this character is obviously going to have to have bones in him he's going to have to deform so objects not going to work and world is definitely not going to work we need to have absolute tangent so now we're going to set up our file names here and we have three options we have tiff open exr and ptex tiff and open exr i've tried both of those they work fine i have not braved ptex yet although that looks to be very interesting and I can't wait to get my, my fingers into that because that looks like a really cool option. Ptex is a new method that doesn't require UVs and it's based on process that Disney Studios created when they were working on Meet the Robinsons and Bolt and they provided it open source and it's now integrated into both Mudbox and Maya. Really cool, haven't had a chance to learn it yet so we're going to stick with a standard TIFF. Now we hit extract and wait for the maps to export. Okay, so here we have our dog monster. Now, one thing to note is that we have exported TIFFs from Mudbox. And as I mentioned in previous video production blogs, Mental Ray doesn't like TIFFs very well. This has been fixed in Maya 2012. If you come over here to the plugin manager, make sure that you have the TIFF float reader plugin installed. Now, if you come look at our displacement map in the attribute editor, you will see that there are several new fields here. We have a channel for displacement map and a channel for vector displacement map. So what we need to do for each one of these is we're going to disconnect that texture node, which is our old displacement node, the black and white grayscale. We're going to click on a little checkerboard here to bring up the create render node panel and create a file node. With that file node we are going to search for our vector displacement node 
for the head. You have your vector encoding. Because these are TIFFs, you want to leave it as floating point absolute. Sign encoding would be in case you converted it to like a JPEG or something like that. But these are TIFFs, so leave them as floating point absolute. Vector space, you want to set to tangent. Remember, these are absolute tangent maps because this is a deforming object. If the dog was not going to deform, like say he was a statue that was going to fly around the world, you would set it to object. If he was a statue that was never going to move, you can set it to world. But he will deform, so we are setting it to tangent. Now, because we are importing this from an older file, there's another step that we're going to have to do that I discovered after banging my head against the wall several days. If you look here at the connection, the displacement shader has an output called displacement, which is plugged into the displacement shader input of the shading engine. This will not work. That's because there is a new output from the displacement shader node called vector displacement. Since we are using a vector displacement map, we need to connect this attribute to the shader engine. So again, this was the original attribute that was connected to it. We've disconnected that and we are now going to connect the vector displacement to the displacement shader. And we need to do that for all four of them. Now these extra displacement textures we can get rid of by simply going edit, delete unused nodes. So let's do a quick test render. What I want to do is I want to see just the effect of the vector displacement. So I am going to turn off all the subsurface scattering features of my shader for now. Keep in mind that to see the vector displacement, you have to render in mental ray. Rendering in the standard Maya renderer will not work. So I'm going to temporarily set the diffuse to 1, set all the subsurface scattering values to weights to 0, and now we'll do a quick test render and see how that comes out. So here we have our dog monster with the vector displacement maps on. And as you can see, he came out pretty well. We're getting a lot of the nice roundness in the blisters. We're getting a lot of the detail coming out in the character. So it all worked pretty well. And it nice round, smooth shapes here. That would have been much more difficult, if not impossible, to get from a simple displacement map. So that is vector displacements using Mudbox and Maya and we will continue setting up our fast skin shader in the next episode. Thank you very much.